like the best is yet to come and about our coming of age, I want to say today we are remembering Canada's favorite mm. sex educator, Sue Johansson. <laughs> Generation, generations, uh, she had a massive impact on our lives. She did pass away yesterday at the age of 93. God bless her and her family. For decades, she gave advice on her radio and television shows about pleasure, about consent, about sexual health, about sexual empowerment. I mean, the list goes on. So we're doing a little nostalgic moment to kick off the show. What did you learn from Sue Johansson, Lainey. Oh, I have so many memories. So I went to a school, I was lucky enough to go to a school where Sue Johansson came for our assemblies to give sex talks. And you know how it is at school, when there's a school assembly, it's usually around noontime. You don't wanna go to the assembly. Yeah. Like you're taking up my time during my break. It's so boring. The principal's gonna go on and on and on. But we couldn't wait on Sue days. Mm. You know, you couldn't teach us anything from nine to noon on Sue days because we were all vibrating because we were... <laughs> <laughs> from excitement yeah. um, and from the content that we were about to learn. And I remember, I remember being in those assemblies, you know, everyone was paying attention, nobody was falling asleep, nobody was whispering or passing notes or flirting. Everybody was just so focused on Sue, and we were like watching her pull out a fruit and demonstrate. <laughs> How to put on, on a condom. Yep. And the way she spoke to us, I mean, because sex ed used to be so clinical. Mm -hmm. They'd either, you know, put in a video, and yeah. some guy in a lab coat would tell you about the anatomy, and it took the sex out of sex, right? Yeah. yeah. And Sue made sex sound real. Yeah. You know, it wasn't clinical. I mean, it was very clinical language, but she did it in a way that was very conversational. She made it fun. She made it funny. Mm -hmm. She made it, she acknowledged that it was awkward. It just, it, some of my best memories are those assemblies. So I uh, thank you, Sue Johansson, for That's all. Oh my God. Simon, so uh, Simon also went to one of those high schools where Sue yeah. came to talk, and that's how he learned to how to put on a condom. So I thank Sue for, for that. <laughs> Let's be honest. But, but I think also what she did for the gay community is like it's unquantifiable. There was this guy on Twitter who who did one of those Twitter essays, and he's just said back in the 80s, he was not out, and it was a very different time. He was afraid to come out. And he just happened to tape one of her radio shows where she had on, I think his name's David Kelly, he's a sex educator, and they were talking about how important it is for parents to support their gay kids. Mm -hmm. And he taped it, and he was so nervous that his mom would find the tape, he locked it. He locked it in this little contraption. Mm -hmm. Then he got caught making out with his boyfriend by his mom, and his mom didn't speak to him. And then he left the tape for the mom to listen to. The mom listened to the tape. Long story short, she was so moved by it that she joined PFLAG, which is that incredible organization yeah. we featured last week, and ended up being on Sue's circuit, her speaking circuit, mm -hmm. to just sort of audibly say to every parent, this is the most important thing that you have to do is to love and treat your kid, your gay kids, as much as you would, obviously, any other kid well, that you yeah, ever had. Absolutely. So she, yeah. she saved families, not to be overly dramatic, she probably saved lives, True. Yeah. you know? Absolutely. Interesting. I like you. I was looking at all the people who had all those wonderful anecdotes to talk about sex with Sue. We all know who she is. Um, but I really didn't benefit from her as much because I had my own sex with Sue at home. My mother, oh. Janice, I know she's watching, she gave me the sex talk when I was nine and she didn't leave anything out. She told me about all the things. And I remember at nine? At nine was years that old, hard to hear at nine? It was very hard. I thought it was on punishment. I thought yeah. it was something wrong. I was like, <laughs> Like, did I not take the chicken yeah, out of the why, why are you telling why me this? Why are we discussing this? Why am I in trouble? So I remember getting that talk, and I was a little bit ahead of all of my friends, but I think she figured I was, I was very, I was like a little bit of a, you know, I thought I was big when I was like nine years old. She's like, she can handle the conversation. So she gave me that, in, that information, and then later on, maybe a couple years later, I was having, you know, conversations with friends during uh, recess, and they didn't even know how a baby was born. They were like, yeah, the baby comes out of her butt. And I was like, no. <laughs> Wait, it's either a cesarean or it's vaginal. Do you guys not, like, I had all this information at a very young age, which I was grateful for. And I just assumed that everybody got what I got, which was that conversation with your parent about sex. But I really realized that none of my friends, not one of them to this day, has ever had a conversation about sex with their parents. So sex with Sue was vital for everybody to find out a safe space to ask those questions. But then I'm 
looking at today's generation, I'm like, where's the sex with Sue? Yeah. Who are these kids talking to? And these kids have access to more pornography than we ever did, which is not a good thing. So. Who is like going the, backwards yeah, a bit? Who's I, breaking I down actually, that information? I actually thought of that last night when I was watching all the news reports. Mm. Sex with Sue could not live on the air today. Why not? I, could you imagine? I think there are so many parents for many different reasons. We've seen this in the school system that they have been really uh, fighting mm. sex ed in schools. They don't think it's appropriate. And yet Sex with Sue taught us that the more education a kid actually gets in sex ed, the wait, the longer they wait to actually have sex. Yep. So in other words, I say this to all the parents because I think I'm taking a page from your mom's book. Mm -hmm. We started talking about anatomy and sex with our daughter very, very young because we're parenting with radical honesty. I credit that with, with Sue Johansson's mm -hmm. teachings because I know that with a device and a Wi-Fi signal, if I'm not teaching my daughter sex ed and about her body and about pleasure and about consent, she's gonna learn it from pornography. And I would rather yeah. I be her teacher. Pornography, yeah. yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Either pornography or some little boy that she has a crush on who's convincing her that, you know, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. You don't want her to be in that situation. You want her to have agency to say, yeah. no, no, I know exactly what happens if we do this. We need to protect ourselves. You want her to have that, be able to have that mm -hmm. conversation and that confidence. And so. you know, I, I think she also taught us about pleasure. Yes. Yeah, I wish Cynthia was here today. I know she's in St. John's, Newfoundland. Hi, Cynthia. Um, but um, it was about pleasure. It wasn't just about the mechanics. Mm -hmm. This goes here, you do this, <laughs> and you know, yeah. Yeah, the little flow chart. It was about pleasure, mm -hmm. that you are not there as a woman to just service a man. Yep. You sit there and say, but here's what I need. And I, that <laughs> was revolutionary yeah. to hear for young, at least for me as a young woman. And she made oh. it like, I mean, I remember distinctly at one assembly, she was talking about pleasure and she was talking about achieving an orgasm mm -hmm. and sometimes not knowing what that is at a certain age. Like, so sad. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so sad. Yeah. <laughs> And she would say, she would make us feel like we weren't strange mm -hmm. if we had a tingle yeah. and a big tingle and yeah. a tingle that, you know, eventually the, got bigger and bigger the and big bigger. Tingle. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and she put it, and, and that's the thing is that she was very, very, like she talked to kids mm -hmm. like they were not kids. That's yes. right. Right? She didn't t talk down to us. And it felt really, really empowering. Yeah. Empowering. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. I, I, I hope uh, Sue's family is watching. I know her daughter was on a lot of the news programs yesterday. We are so sorry for your loss. Mm -hmm. But man, the impact of Sue on generations. Yeah. You're literally right. I think she saved lives and brought a lot of pleasure to lives <laughs> as well. A lot of tingles. A lot, lot of tingles. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.